As the old 80s song says, slow down, you move too fast. In our culture, we run at 100 miles an hour. Not literally, of course, but figuratively. But so much good happens when we slow down and take our time. That applies in faith as, it, as much as it does the rest of our life. But what does that mean when it comes to our faith? What does that mean when it comes to our life? And why does it matter? That's what we're going to be talking about today on Ignition. Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Dr. Chris Bergwald, and we want to set your faith ablaze so that you might live the adventure that comes from a relationship with Jesus Christ. Before we get into today's topic, we want you to know that we love the listener feedback. So if you've got questions about this episode, or if you have ideas for future episodes, please contact us. The easiest way to do so is by email, and the address is ignition at sfcatholic.org. Again, ignition at sfcatholic.org. I'm joined in studio by Robin Bruggeman. Hey, Robin. Hello. Happy everything to you. <laughs> Do you remember that from before? What? No. <laughs> You're going to have to go back and re-listen. Happy everything. Did I, go back that? and re-listen to your podcast. <laughs> Previ- previous, with you? A previous episode with you? Yeah. Oh, happy. happy everything. Oh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. That kind of happy thing? Happy everything. Happy everything. All right, very good. Uh, Robin, <laughs> uh, now we're, we're recording this a bit earlier, but if people are listening to this, well, we're on the time it's coming out. It's um, the last Sunday of Lent, mm-hmm. Palm Sunday-ish depending when folks are listening so how's your lent gone (laughs) it's been very fruitful yeah good you you know that yeah we'll project into the future good so um we're going to be talking about today is uh you you heard me um not too long ago talk about so i started with uh, that lyric and and that might be a 70s song actually slowed i think it's a simon garfunkel song it, no, I can't sing it because YouTube's <laughs> going to get mad at me. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I think it's a Simon and Garfunkel song, actually. So it's, pro- it's older than the 80s. It's like a 60s or 70s. In case you can do it, look it up real quick. All right, thanks. Um, the, the meta- so the idea, like, yeah, life, and as much as that was true back in the 60s or 70s, it's even truer today. We just yeah. go, 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 go. Now, it's part of this, I think, is something that, I, I don't know if this is with you, um that i talked about this but one of my favorite things to reflect on for my own sake but also um for the sake of helping people be more aware of it is the way that we distract ourselves yes we did talk on that yeah right so peter crave talks about where did all the time go why are we so busy well yeah his point is we want to be busy because if we slow down we become more aware of our deeper needs ultimately our need for god and we don't want to Deal with that, so we we fill our we f- everything everything with, <laughs> with yeah, and we do it quickly yeah. Um, and, and my what am I? Do you have a do you have an answer yet over there? But okay, uh, let us know. But I won't be able to see you, so you're gonna have to like wave wildly, <laughs> Casey. Um, one of my favorite metaphors to describe the way that we oftentimes live, as opposed to how we could live. I'm doing wax on wax off here. You Try to get it, watch it by the way. <laughs> Um, microwave versus crock pot. Mm-hmm. We live in a micro. I, I remember when we first, at, growing up, when we got our first microwave. Yeah, I do too. It was about yeah, five giant. feet wide. Had the dial. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> I remember our family too. Um, yeah, it, we live in a, like I just want it. I want yeah. it right now. I mean, I, th- I think I had shared uh, in in what you were talking. Like, I I can get impatient impatient in a fast food line. Yeah, like if, if, I, if I'm doing do drive through and yeah. if it's more it's than like enough. three minutes, like come on, what's I mean, the holdup? They're making food. <laughs> Granted, they're usually just heating it up more or mm-hmm. less, and you know, doing whatever. Kind of scary when you think about it. I know, I know. <laughs> but how impatient I can get when. I'm going to get a, maybe not the best quality food, but I'm going to get a substantial meal within. Mm-hmm. I mean, if it's minutes. ten minutes, that's way too long. Yeah. But see, within ten minutes, like, and and I'm okay. Come on, yeah. Tap in my yeah. look at my watch. Like, it's let's the go. World we live in. So there, we 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 just live at that really fast pace, mm-hmm. as opposed to a crock pot pace. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, my goodness, they, like or or like like. Okay, right now it's still, you know, a lot of snow on the ground yeah, right now. 
and so like uh, like a I think of like a think of like a a big um, pot of soup or chili mm-hmm. that's just simmering for hours and all mm-hmm. those flavors are melding. What a, we're recording on a Friday. What a good yeah, thing right. to be talking about. Like, <laughs> I'm salivating right now. But so off, or sous vide, you know what sous vide is? Have you heard oh. about sous vide? So sous vide is this way to prepare food. Basically, um, it's actually used in a lot of restaurants, but consumers now, where you put uh, a cut of meat, any kind of meat, it could be vegetables too, um, but it goes in like a, a sealed vacuum packed bag and then it's put in water that as a, is at a constant temperature. So you actually can cook meat this way and you never burn it because the water is at exactly the right temperature that you need to cook your steak. Or again, Fridays, why am I talking about your fish? Interesting. You know, your filet of fish. Your, and your it filet doesn't of melt salmon the wrapper? No, nope, because it doesn't, it doesn't get that, that it doesn't take, scary. you know, 180 degrees or whatever. Hmm. Anyway. Good things almost always take time. Good things almost always take time. Uh, the specific context that you heard me talking about this was, um, I've got, for those who are listening, I've got a Bible uh, here in my hand. Um, there are things when we're reading scripture, there, there are the things that, I, I, I call them the, and I got this from Dr. Scott Hahn, the holy huh. Yeah. Like you're reading it like, wait, what? Mm-hmm. Huh? What? And what we should do is when we have that, what? Is, is rather than uh, too often what we do, microwave culture, what? I don't know, whatever. And we yeah, move, move along. Move we just it. move right along. The metaphor that I love to use being from Minnesota, the land of, in fact, 15,000 lakes. Thank you very much. <laughs> but 10,000 is a rounder number. Casey, anything yet? What? Um, <laughs> <laughs> if, if listeners. Listeners if you might know, be able to get in, get before back be, to us you faster. have to wait before Casey gets back to me. Um, what what the Simon and Garfunkel song is? Ignition at sfcatholic.org, and I'll send you a prize. Ignition at sfcatholic.org. Slow down, you move too fast. What what's the song? <laughs> uh, I know Casey. Hopefully, you'll get back to me before our listeners do. He wants do, the prize, which Listen will be in April. Away. <laughs> um, I don't think he's actually listening now because he's just typing now or looking. <laughs> anyway, anyways, anyway. Um, 1966. What's the name of the song? Oh, 59th Street Bridge. Well, that's why you weren't finding it if it's Nothing under something else. Yeah. 1966. <laughs> way before any of the three of us were born. Yeah. So, back to microwaves. Bugs across, across the water. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're talking so about the Minnesota, lakes. you can skim across. The, uh, it, there's these bugs that skim across the surface of okay. lakes. And that's how I can be with the... Huh? Mm. moments but i should make it a holy huh and Mm. stop and go deep and the challenge and this is where i brought up the the difference between microwave and crock pot um the challenge is okay what does this mean and and we might ponder it we hopefully lord we pray Mm -hmm. we ponder and we pray lord what what does this mean i don't understand like what's going on here Mm -hmm. um we might do some study in this case, we might consult some Bible commentaries, some study Bibles, and we might still get, not get an answer. And then we revert back to the the surface skimming bug. Mm-hmm. Oh well, move along. Yep. On to the next thing. Well, if it's something that sticks with you, maybe that's the Lord. I'm going to use your image. But that's the Holy tapping. Spirit tapping on your yeah. shoulder. Yeah. I want you to stay with this, Chris. Mm-hmm. Not like literally, like for like. Well, don't stop studying or stop praying until you get the answer. But mm-hmm. maybe this is something that he really wants me. That he's inviting you into. Exactly. Yeah. And he's he not you, going to you. reveal it to me right away. He, he might not reveal it to me for weeks or months or even years. Mm-hmm. Now, again, we, I think we have to be attentive to. Are, are you asking me, Lord, like to really? But if we get the sense, he might be asking the tap, tap, tap. Nope. Keep going. Sometimes it's like mm-hmm. let's, we can let go of it, but if mm-hmm. he calls us, so this this is where I'm going to kind of flip some stereotypical uh, some stereotypes here. He's wooing us. Mm. He 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 wants us. So, scripture is his revelation. Um, in scripture, God reveals Himself to us. Well, He doesn't want to just reveal Himself to me just 
boom, you know, we're not strangers. Mm-hmm. The Lord and I are not strangers, but he still wants me to seek after him. Mm-hmm. Um, be in relationship with him. To be in relationship with him. So he's, he's wooing me. He wants me to seek him. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so sometimes he doesn't give it to me right away. And I am very impatient. I am definitely a microwave culture kind of a guy. Um, I like to do things too, I eat too quickly. I talk too quickly. I do all sorts of things too quickly. But the best things come to those who wait, as the saying mm-hmm. says. The best things come, again, think of going back to our metaphors here, a crock pot. Almost, almost always, if it comes out of a crock pot, it's going to be better than if it came out yeah. of a microwave. Better quality. Yep. More tasty. More tasty. Probably more fulfilling. I mean, you can get full on both if you go to McDonald's or if you right. eat something up in the microwave. Yep. So when you say better quality. But, but okay, please. go. No, go. No, no. Well, I was just going to say um, that <laughs> this is going to sound so weird. Okay, because food, you get hot food either way, yep. right? You get hot food if you go through a drive through It's <clears throat> Food is hot when you come out of the microwave. But doesn't it seem like it's way hotter when it comes out of the crock pot oh do you know what i mean yeah 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 and so then it comes out and even before you can get it into your mouth you're still smelling all the smells and it's just i feel like it is um activating more senses right you know right and so there's just even this greater i think anticipation of what has been made right and more um attentiveness and more care has been put into that meal too. Yep. Instead of just throwing it in the microwave. Yep. Therefore, what, what's the therefore for you in that right there? What difference does that make? There's more attentiveness and more care in the preparation. I don't know. It just seems more special. And um, what's the word you think I should say? No, no. I, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, And I think of, like, okay, as a mom, if I can make a good, healthy, um, nourishing, but very tasty meal that my family loves, as opposed to when I'm in my crazy state and just like, okay, are there leftovers I can reheat or is there something I can throw in the microwave? It just makes me even feel better when I have prepared something with care for the ones I love. Mm. Um, Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> totally, absolutely. So you had said better, and I wanted you to go first, so I'm glad I did, because I, I really like that. <laughs> but you had said uh, the food's usually better quality. Yeah, um, for sure. <laughs> it, and therefore, it's more, it's more nourishing mm-hmm. for you. The thing yeah. that takes longer is almost always more nourishing mm-hmm. for you. There's more, more substance to us. it. More, yeah, it's, it's better for mm-hmm. us. What we actually need. Right. It's, you're right, right. You know. Right. I do... <laughs> There was a time uh, when um, when the older kids were little where we stopped at a fast food place. Um, and this was a point where we thought maybe there were some gluten intolerances. Mm. So uh, we had the kids have their fast food cheeseburger, eat it without the bun, and they were eating it. And like, they didn't like they it. They didn't like it. Without the bun. We, I mean, this is... It's- it's, it's still it's, food. You're still being yeah, and, and I'm like, what do you think? I mean, it's not like it's not like uh, you know, it's not like chopped sterlo- sirloin, um, <laughs> ground. What ground? It's not ground sirloin or something, but still. So I ate just the beef patty with the cheese, and it did, so it didn't have the pickles. Yeah, and it was just it the was patty just with some the cheese. Pa- pa- actually, or just, it was the just patty. a patty. Just the patty. Oh. <laughs> it was not good. I had, it was not good. I had no idea huh. how much the bun and the condiments at add. this particular chain <laughs> add to the flavor. The beef by itself I mean, is not good. It might not be beef. I know. <laughs> or it's definitely not just beef, I think. I think there's some filler in it. Um, it's not as healthy and substantial. Okay. So I want to transition here. So <laughs> this is not a food show. <laughs> You know, we're not, I'm not, we're not auditioning to get ignition on the food network. 
Um, so I want to, and we've talked a bit about life, your example, like mm-hmm. we're taking this analogy and making the easy application to family life and so on, but I want to unpack it more when it comes to our faith and other mm-hmm. aspects of our life. But if you're just tuning in, uh, you are listening to Ignition. Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Dr. Chris Bergwald, talking today with Robin Bruggeman about living um, like a crock pot as opposed to microwave. Not us being the crock pot or the microwave, but like living mm-hmm. at the speed, the pace mm-hmm. of crock pot cooking as opposed to, I keep doing the wax okay. on, wax off. So that means, microwave. okay, since you're saying that you're referring to Karate Kid, yes. which you made a reference to, I don't know if it was while we were recording or behind the scenes, one of our last times we recorded. And so I watched Karate Kid oh, with the kids. Yeah. With my littles who had not seen it yeah. yet. And of course, they're like, is this it? You know, the animations, or not animation, but you know, the cinema, yeah. whatever. Um, but anyways, as I'm watching this, of course, it's like the era we grew up in. Yep. So I feel like I was able to like step back in yeah. time. And what I came away with, and actually my kids loved it, not long into it, they were like, this is actually really funny. Mr. Miyagi is, is it really funny. Right. But something that stuck out to me that is kind of applicable here is you watch Karate Kid, is it Daniel and Allie? Yep. And, you know, you see them um, kind of falling in love, right? Yep. This is pre-cell phone. And so they're picking up on each other's cues. Yep. They're watching each other. Just like love was, like, I think in our day, you know, before we had cell phones. And I I came away for that with, after watching the movie, feeling kind of sad because I'm like, you know, nowadays our kids have cell phones and they're on them and they can be um, entering into relationship or liking somebody or whatever, mm-hmm through cell phones and how they're actually missing out on all this interacting and the looks mm-hmm. and um, do you know what I'm talking about? I do, I do. And so that kind of is similar. Like even like relationships I feel like now can be that way because it's like a microwave and it's like moving quick because you can do all this texting and um, snapping, whatever. Right. But it seemed more crockpot like when we were younger and we didn't have the distractions yep. and it just was going at this slower pace and you were um, just picking up on different cues yep. or um, I don't know. You so, know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it, it, it's a richer experience. Yes. It's yes. a richer. Um, yes. I mean, and technology has its place and it does. Messaging it does. Has I'm not place. totally dissing it. Right. But, um, but it's just a different time. But a different yeah, time. And, a, the and if communication is purely electronic in that way, it is a, a shallower exper- interaction. Mm-hmm. It's a, it's it's a, but shallower is whatever the opposite of rich is. Um, it's it's not as rich, not of, as uh, deep, maybe. Or I don't know. And I don't want to get. I mean, I don't want to make anybody feel bad if they're right <laughs> yep. relationship because that's it's just the world we live in. But I do think it's a. It's a richer experience if you go about, like, if you see, you're going to go into the scripture part of it now, right? Yep. Potential. Yep. And so your experience is different, I think, if you are slow and take, like, um, paying attention. Yes. yes. And having an awareness. Yes. Without the distraction of the speeding along or, I don't know, going too quick. Yep. And so this is where, so. Paying attention and having that awareness. Awareness mm-hmm. of myself uh, in the context of scripture, awareness of the word and what the Lord is saying mm-hmm. to me in this moment. Because if I'm going too quickly, I'm not going to be able to hear him. Right. It makes me think of at Broom Tree, where it's in the silence, God speaks. Exactly. And we can't hear him because we don't get, we don't allow ourselves to have the silence. Right. We choose it. Yep. Each of us individually yep. with how much we distract ourselves. Right. Exactly. So, so, so it applies to the scripture, but actually before we get to that, I want to talk about another dimension of this because it really is about the, the inner, um, the integration of our faith and life. So this approach is definitely helpful when it comes to prayer, Mm -hmm. when it comes to reading the Bible, but also when it, in order for me to be a missionary disciple, so Diocese of Falls, our diocesan Mm -hmm. vision, lifelong Catholic missionary discipleship through God's love, in order for me to be a missionary disciple, I have to be aware of myself Mm -hmm. and aware of the person who I'm with and paying attention to the person that I'm with. And I can't do that if I'm always just going on to the next thing. I'm sure, I mean, anybody who's listened to more than a handful of of episodes of Ignition has heard me um, talk about the grocery grocery store checkout clerk. 
It'll come back to me. Re- yeah, refresh us. Um, so, <laughs> one of my favorite examples on the little ways that we are called to accompany others, uh, to be missionary disciples to others, are like when you're going through the checkout line at the grocery store or at the department store. Am I aware? Am I really aware of, present to, attentive to, the 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 checkout clerk, the person in front of me? Um, this is another. This is an immortal being in mm-hmm. front of me, mm-hmm. uh, who's ha- who has hopes and dreams, who is created by God on purpose with an eternal mm-hmm. destiny. Do I do I look at, interact, and treat him or her? with that aware awareness Mm -hmm. am i am i being attentive am i paying attention or am i just Mm -hmm. looking at my phone while they're scanning my cart full of groceries i recently heard um a priest say christianity begins with a smile in those situations yeah like to the checkout person do you remember who it was i don't was it father michael gately i don't know maybe he's not local i mean he's no 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 no. it was on some no it was oh because he talks about the true. apostolate of the smile. Oh Father really? Father talks about the, the apostolate. Okay, I don't know if it was him or not, but yeah, he said Christianity begins with a smile to your checkout person, to anybody holding the door open for someone right. and just saying hi and smiling, and that is recognizing that they are made in God's likeness and yep. everything too. Um, but it takes that crackpot mindset right. to do that instead of the microwave i'm on to my next and you know can right. i quick get through the door before i've told it for, open for somebody or quick check me out faster you know so exactly yeah, yeah. so because I'm, if, if i'm used to filling every possible moment of downtime or boredom with mm-hmm. a distraction i will not be able to be i will not be as aware as i should i'll yeah. recognize okay i know that's a person i'm not in the checkout line it's not a robot yet yeah. um <laughs> yes. so i know that but i'm not really Attentive to, I'm not paying attention mm-hmm. to the person in front of me. You know, I love um, the, the, the the it's a, one of the curiosities of of English language syntax. I'm supposed to pay attention to you. I, I'm paying you, not with money, but uh, with attention. The implication yeah. being, just in in the language there, the syntax that I owe it to you. I pay. Mm-hmm. I'm paying you for some. For something, it means I, hmm. I I I owe it to you. I never thought uh, of it like that. I'm supposed to give you my attention. Mm-hmm. I'm supposed to pay attention to you. Um, Good stuff to think about. And wow. again, yeah, you can't do that if you're operating more like a microwave than a, mm-hmm. like a crockpot. Yeah. So I think when it, when it comes to um, okay. And, and, I have an answer to this, Robin, but I'm curious what your answer to the question. Well, why? Okay. That's just being polite and kind, Chris Bergwald. What do you mean that's uh, a way of living as a missionary disciple? How would you answer? Do you have, do you have an answer to the question? So What's, me just look, making eye contact, smiling, holding the door. Like that's just common courtesy. You're, aren't you overly spiritualizing this, Dr. Bergwald, and missionary discipleship in action? What, what do you mean by that? Do you have people, a thought on that? Well, people aren't doing that anymore. Okay. Like, I look I people watch some. <laughs> yep. And in fact, I was in the Mall of America a couple weeks ago. Fun place people watch. And I I don't think people are slow. People aren't smiling. People aren't holding the door. People right. aren't um recognizing um the people around them. They're just I right. don't think there's that awareness. So right. yes, it is common courtesy, but I feel like our world has lost common I courtesy. Agree. So when, I don't know, I mean. So it, it should, know. we should do it, but isn't we it just it. curious? Isn't it just curi- courtesy? Isn't it just courtesy? Why do you, do you, why is it actually missionary discipleship? How is it missionary discipleship in action? How is it hmm. being missionary? How is it proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ by doing something which is important, but it's, isn't it just courtesy? Do you have a thought on that? Not that I can put into words. So my answer to that question is, in a, in a culture in which, in which, as studies tell us, the majority of adult Americans go throughout their day without a meaningful interaction with another, uh, another human being, at mm-hmm. least they're, they're throughout their work day, yeah. um, there are a lot of lonely people. Mm. 
there's an epidemic of, of loneliness mm-hmm. uh, that was pre-COVID. It certainly was exacerbated by yeah. COVID, um, but that and, and it has real-world consequences. Me doing what is just a matter of common courtesy in the past uh, is an instance in which somebody it's a it's a lifeline. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, they may mm-hmm. not need it. They might be among the minority who have meaningful interactions with adults mm-hmm. in their throughout their work day, but that's the minority. Yeah. So by me, um, so it's the meaningfulness behind it yes. and the intentionality. Yes, is what I would have. That's how I probably would have answered when you asked. Is that yeah. what you mean? Yeah, exactly. It's actually like making eye contact with them and smiling yes. and, and or that, just saying something. And that's an that is missionary meaningful. discipleship because it's me seeing mm-hmm. them and yeah. recognizing just in a look. And you can't do this by text. Back right, to your earlier right. point, it's me recognizing their dignity, and mm-hmm. they know. I mean, when when somebody sees you in a meaningful way, you recognize the difference. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, you recognize the difference. Yeah. So by me recognizing, seeing them and recognizing in, in, in that act of seeing, recognizing, acknowledging their dignity, that can be a form, that is a real form, a subtle one, a small one, but a real one nonetheless of accompaniment, mm. of being a missionary to them, of being the means by which they are recognized and seen and therefore mm-hmm. loved. Yeah. It's and, a means by which they are loved. And change that person's... Exactly, exactly. Like, and and it's, that's me loving them, but it's also the Lord loving them through yeah. me. And it doesn't take that much effort. Right. At all. Nope. Nope. Exactly. Yeah. So, Robin, we got about a minute left. I the scripture. We... Uh, <laughs> so, in 60 seconds. Um, when we're reading the Word, which... As Christians, as disciples, uh, we should be doing on a regular, ideally daily basis... Mm-hmm. We should be pondering it. I mean, the, the, every time somebody's talking about um, that divine reading, Latin phrase, Lexio Divina, mm-hmm. um, a prayerful pondering of the word, they, uh, you always point to it, the, the metaphor of a, ch- a cow chewing its cut, and yeah. you live on a farm. Mm-hmm. Um, the idea of it, it's that rumination. Mm-hmm. We should patiently ponder and ruminate on the word of God, especially when we have those holy huh moments mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and trust that the lord will at some point it'd be nice if it's this side of heaven but maybe not but at some point he he will reveal to us what it is that sort of made us pause and invited us to ponder in that moment so yeah. just as we and as uh, going to people are listening going into palm some well, palm sunday and holy week this is a perfect time to do that For sure amen amen thanks robin yep And folks, that will wrap up this episode of Ignition. Again, you can email us, ignition at sfcatholic.org, with any questions about today's episode or ideas for future ones. And until next time, may God bless you.